Hi guys, gals, Neil here, how are you doing? Okay, there's hundreds and thousands of little things we do on our motorbikes as we are riding around to stay safe and it's not just one technique, like I said, there's so many different scenarios that we come up against and there's the tiniest little things that we do in relation to road positioning and the things we pick up on uh, as we get more and more experienced and we learn things and half of the stuff you probably learn it without even knowing and after 20, 30, 40 years of riding you end up with a toolbox metaphorically of experience and the tiny little things that you do automatically um, that you can't really teach it or we couldn't until the internet came along and we get this opportunity where we can show each other hints and tips if you like here today I've got a situation where I've got two or three little tips um, specifically about using other vehicles to protect yourself here I've got a situation where I'm, I'm heading into the city, it's like 6.15 in the morning, the sun is coming up, it's going to be a beautiful day in Adelaide and I'm on what is Port Road. Now if, I, if you look at my screen, I've got this red mouse here, um, you see my lanes two, one and two, I've got another lane here that joins my road and it makes it a three lane carriageway here. This is, as I say, is Port Road at, uh, at Beverly. Uh, the suburb. Now we've got quite a large median strip here, it's probably 20-30 metres wide separating this carriageway and the westbound carriageway going the other way. Between these um, two carriageways, all green grass and there's little laneways across which I'll show you in a second. Now what I'm going to show you here, um, let's not beat about the bush, I'm not about getting people through your test. I'm all about keeping you alive and I'm one for using my power to put myself in a better position and also that might mean fracturing the law slightly to gain a, a safer position in the road. You live by the sword, you try your best to stay within the legal limits and certainly in built up areas but you might find yourself in a situation where you're going to be a lot safer if you grab a handful and put yourself in a better position. Here's a good example of that. Um, as I said, I've got this new style Pajero coming down this lane here. And I'm in this lane here, I'm just a slight left hand bend. Quite often I'd have been in the right hand lane here so I've got a better view around the corner. However, in this instance I didn't, I can't remember why not. There's a, oh, there's a reason for everything. Um, if I press play, we'll immediately see, I'll press pause straight away, you'll immediately see, and I'll go back slightly, I'll talk about that little lane way and you'll see a car coming across. Go back a bit more. Just watch this area here. You'll see a car going right to left towards that Pajero. Now, if I hang back and stay where I am, my risk is that once that car's gone, this Pajero, and he's moved beyond the, the junction, which I'm sure that car will have seen, that car can come straight across and go straight across because there is a, a road that not just it, that car that's coming across that median strip can actually turn right and go in the same direction as me or it can go straight over. If it goes straight over, it's straight to my path, of course. To mitigate that happening, listen to my engine. Basically, I saw him there and I'm just going to show you one more time. Let's do it one more time. In fact, take it back a little bit further. And just watch. You see him? I can see him here. I basically put myself in the same geographical location, the same time zone, if you like, as this Pajero. And that way, I've caught him up. My risk is vastly reduced of this guy being able to pull out on me because he's still at the junction, hidden behind this car. Okay, so what I've done is put myself in that zone. I've used that vehicle as a, as a defensive mechanism for me. If I'd have stood back, the chances are, yeah, he wouldn't have seen me because it was dark. He'd have had the headlights of this vehicle. He's not looking for a motorcyclist. You can never think that they are. Um, and he's got a biker behind him, distracting him probably. The chances are he could have come across the front of me. 
And as I said, I've, I've vastly reduced that happening by getting in the same vicinity of this vehicle here and protecting myself. If I move it along now, as it happened, if I look in my mirrors, he actually turned into the same lane as this new style Pajero and set off this way. So it wasn't actually a risk, but you can't, you don't know that, do you? He, but he was going to come straight across the front of me. Reducing the chance of a near miss. This is what we're talking about. And as we move on, I'm going to show you another example of a similar situation. And um, we're going to move into, into daylight, different day, different zone, but a similar sort of an example. Uh, here I am now, before I get to that situation, you'll notice my head. I'm constantly moving around. I always know what's happening around me. And it's peripheral vision. I might not be moving my head, but I've got my eyes on my mirrors and I'm, I'm, I'm giving it this and the other. I'm always aware of what's going on. And I've got my rear view camera on this particular section as well, as you can see here. The, right, the rider guide rear view. Now, I've got, if I go back ever so slightly, I'm slowly catching up this people carrier. It's a silver something or other, like 19 seat of the car. Uh, and I'm up here in the right hand lane here. I can see around him, he's quite blocking my view and I'm catching him up ever so slightly. Now, as I do, I have a check, but I wait. I've got two cars here waiting to turn right. I can't assume that either of them are going to turn right. One of them could change their mind, that's their prerogative. If this back one, there's two cars there, let me just drop it forward, there's two cars. If that one had changed his mind, he's got room to go around that Toyota Hiace and come into that lane. If he changed his mind and thinks suddenly, oh, actually I'll go to the next junction and turn right or whatever. You go straight to the back of him and that's your own fault if you go do a rear end smash so what i do as you can see i wait so i'm almost past and i'm confident there i think i could have moved out a lot earlier but i decided to stay behind the the white sorry this this silver bloody people carry i don't know what make or model it is it's a fancy dancer thing but i could have moved out a lot earlier but again re increasing the conflict potential of either of them two cars turning right they could change change lanes might not it's unlike, very very unlikely what are you going to do with that one in 200 chance but who takes that risk so i waited till i got beyond them don't get too close because if they change the lanes and you're too close to them we all know what happens moving on let's go a little bit further down the road now this is where it gets a bit interesting so i'm getting beyond this people carrier here now watch my road positioning i'm right to left in my lane I'm moving backwards and forwards. I'm constantly checking my mirrors. You can see my head movements. As I'm moving down the road here, you will see I've got a ute. There's a lot of them in Australia, as you know, and solid. It's not a tray top. I can't see through it. It's just a bloody big toolbox on the back of a back of a flatbed vehicle, and restricting my view. So I'm keeping my distance from him, as you can see. I've got my rear view, and I've already gone past that people car. Here he is in my rear view. And I know there's nobody in front of him, but I'm still constantly checking. I'm looking in this left-hand lane. It's always good to know that if something happens in front of you, you can move across almost instinctively without being at risk because you already know what's behind you. Let's just drop it forward a bit more now and watch my road I'm right to left and I'm checking already. I'm not moving across, but I'm considering my road positioning and considering my view down here. And I'm also still just checking that he's not sped up in this silver car. I want to know that my lane to the left is clear. I'm in the right hand lane because that's just me. Um, I'm in a solid, prominent position and able to see cars coming towards me and also cars coming to junctions here. If anybody pulls out, I've got that bit of space. A good example now, as I'm moving back and forth, slightly catching that vehicle up and I'm a bit too close now, can't see. So now stop, did you see that? Straight away, Again, it's about reducing the rear miss, the near miss. If I just drop back slightly. There. I missed it, I bloody missed my stop sign. I missed my pause button. There. Now I've got it, there you go. Now, look what I've got there. A little white vehicle. There. I've just seen him. Has he seen me? Not ever. Not in a million years has he seen me yet because I'm fully hidden by this vehicle. 
and I know I only can see half of that car and it's not the half where the driver's sat. I'm at risk there. I already know from all the constant checks on my left hand lane here, there's nobody there. However, you still get a, I still get a quick glance that because of that danger there, again, I put myself over to the left hand side and speed up, watch and use, get myself into the same vicinity of that. Did you hear the engine increase in speed? And I've also then, rather than having a seven foot, six foot safety zone between me and that car, in case it comes across me, I've got 16 feet. Listen to the engine as I speed up. It's not necessarily legal, because I'm probably doing 75 and a 60 there. But I've vastly reduced the chances of getting into conflict with that vehicle coming across me, because I've sped up, Got, got in behind that bit closer to this truck and then increase this, the distance between his lane over here. I'm gonna get to it. Oh, I've gone past it, here we go. Well, that's the distance now I've got. I've got ability to avoid him if he, if he hadn't seen me. And again, you've got to consider what people can see of you. Um, as we go down the road then, clearly I can carry on and just get about my business. Uh, at this point, I've got a right hand bend coming up, so I stay in the left hand lane and I can see where I'm heading. So it's just about them little little nuances. There's hundreds of little things and it's a nothing of a, a tip almost, but no less important than any other one. And if you start adding all these little things together that you're doing as you're on your ride and you're, you're taking up that, you're building that toolbox and you're, you're taking up all that experience of, from every ride, and you, you don't know you're doing it half the time, but these are little things that, if, you can, if I can point them out, you might just do the same next time on your ride and just reduce, the, somebody's coming along, and you don't even know you, had any, you, you haven't had any miss. And I, I get people saying, all oh, this blood pulled out on me and cut me up, blah, blah, blah. There's a reason for it. You're not defending before it even happens. And that's what I did there. I defended before it even happened. All right? There was no incident, which is what we want. No incident. And that's the secret to defensive riding, reducing the conflict possibilities and the possibility of conflict with other vehicles. Just tiny little tip, use it. Anyway, onwards, thanks for tuning in. I've got a few things happening. Keep an eye on the Facebook page. If, if anybody isn't on Facebook, check out the Rider Guider on the Facebook. Um, I'm starting to upload a few bits to that as well and other little bits and bats sharing the love between youtube and facebook it's a good tool free tips subscribe to the guide thanks for watching guys see you soon